About a year ago, I created another new version of the SCP Foundation called the Slayers of Cursed Predators for a set of episodes where I was taking SCPs and turning them into dragons. And we're finally checking back in with that organization, but this time I'm going to be taking SCPs that were originally created and submitted by my subscribers and turning those into dragons to fit them into a story that I've been meaning to tell for a little while revolving around our beast chronicler turned beast summoner, Taryn Janivar, along with Bio Michaela and former SCP Foundation employee from another universe, Dresden Oakland. If you need a refresher on any of those characters, you can always go back to their brief bio summaries in the Multiverse Tales Explained episode. It's time-coded and everything. Oh, also, I'll be showing off the other SCPs that were submitted for this as well. But I think that's all the intro info, so let's get into it, shall we? Let's go! Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. Kayla, please, I believe there are many other options we could consider for our initial approach, Taryn said with wind rushing past his ears. You're probably right, but none of them are going to be as fun as this, Kayla said, clad in armor Taryn had once given her, as she slid down to hold onto the feet of the dragon they both rode, Taryn's Violet Portal Leaper, or Violet for short. The biomechanical ally attached to Kayla's arm chimed in as well. Don't worry, Taryn, we'll be fine. If we miss or fall off, I could turn into a mini helicopter or a propulsion jet or a grappling hook, and I mean, that's what I already am. I'm a grappling hook right now, but the point is, we've done way more dangerous stuff than this on our other solo missions. Taryn shook his head. Charlie, did you think those words would be comforting to me? Violet soared them directly over a shrieking blue and black wyvern whose body seemed to be breaking apart and reforming as it soared through the sun-setting skies. All right, Kayla yelled, jumping in three. Two, before Whoa. hitting one, the glitching dragon's tail shifted into the shape of a hammer, and it swung its body around right towards Violet. The portal leaper swooped upward to avoid, but its bottom legs were still clipped by the strike, and it jerked the dragon aside. Kayla fell off the creature and spun through the air. Taryn was quickly ready to aim Violet down to catch her, but there was no need. While falling, Kayla had aimed up her arm and fired out a grapple hand from Charlie. It snatched the horn of the glitching dragon's head, and instantly Kayla's body was whipped in towards the creature. She thudded onto its back and held tight. The dragon's horn unfortunately fell apart, and Kayla lost her grip. Quickly though, she shot her grapple arm around the dragon's neck and gripped hold of it with her other hand, making reins for her with which to hold on to the writhing, breaking dragon as it continued across the dimming skies. Taryn soared down closer, looking both anxious and a bit impressed. Kayla called out, See, Taryn, you don't need to worry about me. I'm well aware by now that I don't need to, Kayla, but that doesn't mean I won't. Charlie, are you able to sustain a bright light on this creature? The sun is going down. It's almost dark enough for this dragon's cloning abilities to activate. Oh no, Taryn, you found my one weakness, which is that I can turn into swords and laser cannons and teleport across the multiverse and become rollerblades, but I can't turn into a bright light. No, I'm just kidding, I can do that. See, I can even do sarcasm too. Charlie's main lens lit up into a near-blinding blue light that shone onto the dragon's back. It hissed angrily. It swirled through the air in a spiral, trying to whip Kayla off, but she just laughed and cheered with excitement, like she was on a roller coaster ride. All right, Kayla, Taryn called as the dragon leveled out. Are, are you able to steer the creature at all? Kayla jerked her reins to the left, and the dragon's flight shifted in that direction. Taryn flew with Violet onto its right side and urged it farther along. Well done, this is working. We simply must get it close enough to the Titaragon's mountain, and it should. Some kind of gong suddenly rang through Taryn's entire body. A voice spoke as if directly into his mind. Overseer of Dimension T905. This is Overseer of S316 Dresden, Oakland. Your predecessor owed me a debt which has now been passed on to you, and I am calling in the favor owed. Taryn tried to speak and acknowledge that his friend Sterling had made him aware that this may happen sometime soon, but Dresden kept speaking over him, as if this were a pre-recorded message. Accept and I will be granted knowledge of your specific location so I may transport myself to you in your dimension to further discuss the terms of this favor. A sort of knowing in Taryn's body urged him to respond, and he said out loud, I accept though he was anxious, not knowing what exactly he'd be asked to do. Along with that, Sterling had informed him that Dresden was likely to be a very harsh judge of Taryn's character, given the man's alleged hatred for other overseers. What was that, Taryn? We're close now, right? Kayla called out in confusion with the creature swooping low towards a forested mountain peak. 
Tehran looked frantically around, regaining his composure, trying to spot the beast that they were now seeking. But if this other creature was nearby, its body was likely blended well into the tree line. Luckily, just in time, Tehran's peripheral vision caught something whipping up by his side. A torrent of vines were spiraling towards him from the ground. He called out, Violet! Shalong! Violet and Tehran burst through a blink of light and were instantly 20 feet farther ahead. The vines redirected towards the glitching dragon and Kayla. Tehran swooped down closer. Your ride is over, Kayla! Quickly! Kayla's eyes darted back and saw the vines coming. She released her grip and leapt off its side. She shot her grapple hand out again and grabbed onto Violet's leg and reeled herself in as the glitching dragon was wrapped up in a cocoon of vines and dragged down into the forest below. As Violet flew them all down to a farther mountaintop, Charlie said, That was insane! I knew your world had crazy dragons, but nothing that weird. Is that normal? Both the vine thing and the breaking glitching dragon? Also, is the vine thing gonna kill that other dragon? They landed and Tehran dismounted. Both those dragons are certainly on the stranger side. The Titaragon is a creature of great intelligence I've long tried to convince back to its once peaceful ways. To no avail as of yet. But anyhow, I, I think you two should both go. While I was in flight, I received a message. Yes, and commonly when you accept and send someone your location, it is considered polite to remain where you are, Overseer T905. Tehran and Kayla whipped around to see a grey, crackling-skinned figure emerging from a purple portal. Not that I expect cordial behavior from the successor of Eulidus. Without even having to be asked, Charlie shifted off Kayla's arm and formed into a ball of wriggling mech and metal in her hands. Oh good, it's Dresden. I'm sure Kate'll be furious to see you. Hey, you mind holding Charlie for me? Kayla chucked Charlie at Dresden and the biomech shot out metal tendrils and latched onto him quickly. A shocked grin burst across Kayla's face because she hadn't been sure that would work, but then the grin instantly vanished. Instead of falling unconscious like most overseers did when a biomech, like Charlie, touched them, Dresden simply stood in place, observing the mech shifting across his arm. It certainly has been quite some time since I observed one of my old biomechanical creations up close. Intriguing that this one seems to have developed a soul energy. That certainly was not my doing. That was finally the proof Kayla needed that their friend Astro was right. Dresden had indeed created Biomax. But as Dresden spoke, Tehran started to wince in pain and clutch his forehead. Tehran? Stop! What are you doing to him? Kayla cried out. I am doing nothing. The energy that holds us in our overseer's bond likely sensed that one of T905's allies attempted to do me harm while we were conducting our deal, and it did not approve. I imagine you are aware of the consequences of breaking an overseer's bond. Against his will, Charlie suddenly shifted off of Dresden into his hand and he tossed the biomech back to Kayla. I recommend not making further attempts to do me harm if you want this event to go smoothly. Taryn's pain ceased. A apologies, Dresden. Kayla and Charlie were just leaving, and I assure you I will do whatever is needed for this bond, so long as it does not compromise my world, my friends, or my moral codes. Uh, no, yeah, we're not leaving, Kayla said, crossing her arms. I won't try and take you down again, but I'm not leaving you alone with Tehran. Sterling might think you're an okay guy somewhere deep down, but I'm definitely not convinced. Dresden seemed completely unfazed. That is understandable. Depending on your skill level, you may in fact be useful in our endeavor, as it will certainly not be an easy one. Dresden turned his attention more directly to Tehran. I once worked for an organization called the SCP Foundation, of which alternate versions can be found across the multiverse. Many of them house a variation of an entity with a very unique energy makeup that makes the creature allegedly impossible to destroy. A being of such power can only be made as the result of overseer tampering, as nature would never create a being of such destructive and malicious abilities. I, however, know for certain that it can actually be killed, as when all life save for myself was once wiped from my own universe by the being known as the Reaper, the version of this reptile from my world was indeed killed. Dresden pulled out a black jagged dagger that seemed to have a faint purple glow about it. An 
ally of mine assisted me in constructing this, using remnants of a sort of energetic scar the Reaper once left in my body. I would like to test this weapon on your world's version of this hard-to-destroy reptile, and see if it is indeed able to kill the allegedly unkillable creature. I believe I know what creature you speak of, Dresden. The Slayers of Cursed Predators are a group that currently hold a beast they refer to as the Unkillable Dragon, but is all you ask of me that I bring you to this creature so you may attempt to slay it? I don't think you comprehend how difficult this will be to accomplish. No version of the SCP Foundation would simply allow a group of strangers to walk into their facility and experiment on one of their most dangerous prisoners. We will need to construct a plan to break into the facility, find the creature, and attempt to slay it without being detected. They also likely have ways of blocking teleportation in or out of their facility, so getting back out will also be quite... Uh, Dresden trailed off as he noticed Kayla desperately trying not to laugh. I, I'm sorry, so just to clarify, no matter how hard or, you know, really super easy it is to get us into the Slayer's base to try and kill this dragon, once we do that, your bond with Taryn is over? I... yes, that is accurate. Why does this concept amuse you so? Kayla just turned to Taryn, who was already tapping the glowing overseer runes on his forearm. A swirling circle appeared in Taryn's hand, and he held it up to the side of his face. Uh, yes, good evening, Sir Bright. Would you by chance have a few moments to assist me with something? Kayla rubbed her hands together and quietly muttered, Oh, Charlie, we might get another shot to talk Jackson into letting us try the Smashosaurus Rex. Moments later, Taryn opened a portal and transported them all to an icy tundra in front of the gates to a walled-off kingdom, reinforced by towering ice formations. Soon after, a figure in light armor with a goofy grin came out to greet them all and usher them inside. So good to see you again, Overseer Geneva. Our Lady Michaela, Charles, welcome back as well. And who's this flaky looking fella? Dresden stood stark still, just blinking in confusion. This is Dresden Oakland. He has a weapon that he strongly believes may be able to kill the unkillable dragon. Well, that's great then. Let's get down there, shall we? Sir Bright immediately spun around and ushered them into the castle walls. Kayla walked on ahead, discussing something with Sir Bright, while Dresden trailed behind with Taryn. I don't understand. How long have you held the position of Overseer T905? I interacted with your predecessor Eulidus not four years ago. Surely no successor of Eulidus could have gained the trust of any version of the SCP Foundation so quickly. Taryn smirked. I'd appreciate if you no longer compared me to Eulidus. He and I are on better terms now, but I certainly do not take after him in terms of how I attempt to oversee our world. He wanted to control this world and essentially turn it into a place where his creatures thrived and humans could not. Yes, I'm aware of his vile overseer methods. I was never a fan myself. So now I imagine you are attempting to do the opposite, then? Giving the world back to humanity and quelling the wrath of beasts? Uh, no, not exactly. I'm simply trying to help guide this world towards a balance as best I can, so humans and creatures can live harmoniously here as best as possible. Though I have come to see just how limited overseers truly are. Perhaps this perspective comes from my limited experience, but it seems to me that on my own I could never hope to oversee every aspect of life on this world, let alone life that exists in my universe beyond the confines of this planet. So I'm simply doing the best I can to help those I can while acquiring assistance from any willing to help find further peace in this world. The Slayers of Cursed Predators were skeptical of me and I of them when we first met, and while we certainly don't agree on everything, I respect that, like myself, they're simply doing the best they can with the resources they have to try and make things better. Taryn's words got Dresden briefly lost in thought, to a point where he almost bumped into Kayla, who stopped right next to a cage ahead, inside which was a silhouetted dinosaur-like figure. She was beaming with excitement. Hey, Jackson, any chance you can drop me here and want to let me into the Smashosaurus' cage this time? He shrugged. 
Oh, sorry, Lady Michaela, but they don't even let me have the keys to that thing's cage anymore. Not after I took it out hunting and scared the willies off that fishing village. Add that to the long list of things that old Jackson Bright's not allowed to do around here anymore. He continued on forward with Kayla asking further questions about who she could get permission from to enter the Rex's cage. Dresden almost cracked a smile. That does not surprise me. My world's own version of the SCP Foundation had an employee quite similar to this Sir Jackson Bright fellow. Though he did not have a New Zealand accent from what I recall. Terran chuckled. Oh, um, Sir Bright is not actually Kiwi. He simply attempts different accents for the joy of it. Last time we were here, he was attempting a German voice. Ah, that makes much more sense. The accent he is doing is not very good. They all descended down and down farther into the depths of the castle. When they finally reached the lowest floor, Dresden was caught off guard to see a red and black striped wyvern out in the middle of the corridor. Dresden raised an arm slowly and Kayla watched as chunks of grey flaking flesh broke apart and hovered around a purple sparking form within Dresden's arm. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that is pretty cool looking, but chill out Dresden, crossfire's on our side. Kayla skipped on ahead. Hey, big guy, still being a draft dodger? The dragon rolled its eyes and playfully batted Kayla away with its wing. Dresden turned to Taran. That creature's energy makeup. As an overseer, I'm sure you can see it as well? Taran smirked. Yes, Crossfire isn't exactly from around here and is more than meets the eye. Sir Bright unlatched half a dozen locks from the door before them and they all stepped through, except for Crossfire who couldn't fit through the door. Before them were three more sets of bars, behind which was a beast with glowing eyes, bound in so many chains that it was nearly impossible to make out its true form. There were sigils painted on the walls and ceilings all around them. That is indeed one of the monsters I seek. I am impressed with what a world of limited technology has been able to do to contain this creature. He pulled out his dagger once more. Ah, uh, do you need to get in close or you're good dame from here, fella? This distance should suffice, and I shall not delay, though be warned, I cannot imagine the creature will respond well if this does not go as anticipated. Dresden flared his palm and his arm opened up once more, with his flaky flesh hovering around a glowing purple arm beneath. The dagger floated up over his palm as well and he aimed it directly towards the creature's forehead. It stared into his eyes and a low, rumbling growl rolled through the room. I always wanted to be the one to kill the hard-to-destroy reptile. I simply did not get the chance in my own world. A slight burst of purple light lit the room as the dagger fired forth from Dresden's hand and impaled directly into the creature's head. Even through a sealed mouth, it let out a roar so fierce the walls shook. It thrashed its head from side to side as black veins with purple glowing aura pulsed across its head from the dagger. Charlie called out, I can't tell if this is working or not, because the thing looks really mad, but it also seems like it's just always really mad. How long is this going to take? Kayla saw that both Taryn and Dresden were staring intently at the creature. Do you see what I see in its energy makeup, T905? Y yes, its energies seem as though they're slowly breaking down from the dagger, but its physical body also seems to be adapting quicker than it's dying. Indeed. That was surely not something I anticipated, but it likely means the creature will be killed eventually, but will also adapt to be stronger and stronger prior to its demise. The dragon wrenched its body aside and tore free one of its many chains. It lashed out the other way and ripped stones from the walls and smashed down one of the three gates before it. Well, that's not good. I hate when I'm the one that has to update the days since less containment breach board. Taryn suddenly crouched down, pulled out a knife and started scratching away the sigils painted on the floor. Everyone, scratch out the seals. We need to break them so I can open a portal to get this thing out of here before it breaks loose any more cursed predators. Kayla shot a beam at the sigils on the ceiling through Charlie. Dresden ran over to one wall and Jackson to the other. More chains snapped and flew across the room as the dragon's full arm broke free and it smashed down the second gate. Taryn broke his seal enough then stood up and started tapping his runes, but stopped. I... Where do I transport us? I could hurl the creature into space, but if it does survive this, then it will be near impossible to track it down after. We don't know how long this could take. We need to keep it as far from sentient life as possible. Take us to the Coriolis Desert of my homeworld. A voice spoke from just outside the door. Taryn turned. 
On your world, Crossfire, I can't subject your people to- My people are a lot tougher than yours, Tehran. Besides, there won't be any life for hundreds of miles in any direction in that desert. We'll have plenty of room to take this thing down for good. Tehran nodded, then marched over to Crossfire. He held his overseer runes to the dragon's head and saw the location in his mind. With all the seals then scratched out, Tehran tapped the runes on his forearm, and a wide portal started growing larger and larger before him, as the dragon tore free from its final chains and crashed through the last set of bars. Tehran thrust his portal forward, forcing the dragon through it, then brought the portal back, taking himself, Kayla, Dresden, Sir Bright, and Crossfire all to the surface of Cybertron. Shaking off the last of its chains, the black veins still growing across its body, the unkillable dragon shrieked, snapping off the bonds on its mouth. My body feels as though it rots from within, but if this is truly my end, I will take you all with me. It flew straight for Sir Bright first with its maw wide, but as it flew for its target, Crossfire's body was shifting and transforming and clinking into the form of a tall mechanical man with a massive mace. He smashed the weapon into the head of the dragon and just knocked it off course before it could bite down onto Sir Bright. But immediately after, the unkillable dragon whipped its head around, bit into Crossfire's arm, and death rolled through the air, tearing the mechanical man's arm off in a mass of sparking metal. Tehran called out in horror. Crossfire, no! But with his still good arm, Crossfire grabbed the mouth of the dragon and leapt onto its back. It's... Ugh. It's okay, Tehran. I can put my arm back on eventually, but you can't. You guys better find a good way to defend yourselves and fast. The dragon thrashed and swirled, trying to shake Crossfire off as the others gathered up. Overseer T905, what is this place? Are we on another planet? Yes, I only visited it for the first time recently after meeting Crossfire on my world. There has been a war raging here for centuries, but neither side of the conflict seemed particularly interested in me intervening. But that isn't important now. Tehran was tapping the runes on his forearm once more. I have used a lot of energy making portals today, but I still have a fair amount of strength. I can call in a beast summon, but I also think I need to make a portal for Kayla to- What? Tehran, stop! No, you're not sending me away! I can handle my own, I love you, and I'm not leaving- Tehran leaned over and kissed her to interrupt that thought. I know, Kayla. I just think you could use some extra defenses for this fight. A portal opened to the front of the Slayers of Cursed Predators castle again. Ask nicely, but tell them you could really use the use of the Rex. Kayla's eyes lit up and she ran through the portal. Tehran held it open as he turned to Dresden. What abilities do you have that can help? If I recall, you were nearly able to kill Sterling even while he was in his enhanced Silver Nova state, so you must be very strong, correct? The abilities I used against Mr. Angeal are ones I can only use well within the confines of Vaxel's prison in my universe. Though, that does not mean I will be a weak link of this conflict. Dresden then turned to Sir Bright and looked at his neck as if searching for something. I don't suppose you possess a medallion that makes you impervious to death, do you? Oh, how do you know about that? And I did, but it was the worst, it was a terrible curse, and Tyrion helped me get rid of it. Though I guess that's not exactly a good thing right now, is it? There was a thundering crash as Crossfire was slammed to the dusty ground off the dragon's back. The beast reeled its head. Tehran looked at his portal in panic. I need to keep this open for Kayla to come back. Dresden, please help him. Before Tehran had even finished, Dresden had marched ahead with his flaking flesh hovering around his arm. He thrust his hand forward and all of the chunks of his arm hurled ahead and slammed into the dragon's jaw. The pieces then orbited around the dragon, and as Dresden flicked his now translucent glowing limb, the hovering pieces shot across the dragon's head, battering it from every angle. One shot right at the dagger in its forehead and pushed the blade deeper in, making the black veins pulse. The dragon roared with such ferocity that the sands around it rippled out in a shockwave. It flailed furiously like it was shooing away swarms of flies, then set eyes on Dresden. You are not from this realm. If I live long enough, I will find your world and turn it to ash, human. Dresden sneered. You're a few thousand years late for that monster. A cascade of glowing purple daggers suddenly burst from Dresden's arm and shot straight at the creature's eyes. However, it closed them in time and soared straight towards Dresden with its jaw spread wide. 
Dresden was remaining in place, ready to fire more bolts, when suddenly footsteps rumbled up behind him, and a towering, multicolored beast stomped forward and chomped a massive jaw into the unkillable dragon's neck, shoving it down into the dirt. It stomped past Dresden, dragging the beast's head across the sand-covered ground. Through its head, Dresden could hear what sounded like Kayla's voice. Woo! No offense to the sharp man, but Betty's mech armor's got nothing on this thing. While still pinning the dragon, this beast that seemed to have Kayla's voice swung its clawed tail around and clamped onto the dragon's head as well. Then, a beam of flames burst out of the tail's end, scorching the dragon's face. Dresden recalled to him the pieces of his arm, and he backed over to Taryn once more. What exactly is that creature? Taryn had closed his portal and was readying up something new with the runes on his arm, but through it he said, the Slayers have had it in storage for a while now. Kayla dubbed it the Smashosaurus Rex. It's essentially a lifeless beast that any human can go inside of through a hole in its back to control it. I see. That is fascinating. I agree. I'd like to attempt to create something like it myself, though certainly not today as I'll be very drained after this. Taryn raised his arm and his eyes began to glow bright orange. Glowing rings grew across his arm. I call, I call upon, upon the, the aid of the, of the searing flare fox, summon, summon forth, forth great, great beast. beast. In a swirl of flames and fur, a creature spawned next to Taryn. It was only about 12 feet tall, less than half the size of the unkillable dragon, and had no eyes or nose. Its wings and ends of its tails seemed to be constructed completely from flames. A summoning ability. Intriguing. Most overseers cannot pull it off well as they cannot make proper compassionate bonds with creatures to do so. Though could you not have summoned something larger? Taryn gestured his hand forward and the dragon burst into the air. I could, but this creature's bite and claws are highly venomous and may help speed up the death rate of the dragon. I normally do not like to use such a cruel weapon, but I cannot let the unkillable dragon be loosed onto another world. We must kill it here and now. The dragon had torn its neck free from Kayla's bite and flew up above her. It swung its tail and smashed against the Rex's head, knocking her into the air and slamming back down to the ground. But before it could descend upon her, Taryn's dragon streaked across the sky and swooped its flaming wings in front of the monstrosity to disorient it. It wasn't phased enough, though. The unkillable dragon lunged its head forward and bit a chunk of fur and flesh out of the front of the fox's legs. It yelped out in pain and a burst of blood spurt from Taryn's ankle as well. He dropped down to one knee but kept hold of his summon. The flare fox darted around its foe's back and bit down into its spine. The dragon shrieked out again and swung its head back with unexpected flexibility and bit right down into the fox's neck. Taryn and his summon both cried out in pain, and teeth marks bore into Taryn's neck as well. Before the beast could bite down farther though, it was ripped to the ground by its tail. Crossfire was back in the fight and had yanked the dragon down with one arm. It released its bite on Taryn's beast briefly, but was going to chomp down again when Kayla too was once more in the fight, biting her own beast's jaw into the unkillable dragon's skull and forcing it down once more. For a moment, they had the beast pinned. And as they did, Taryn and Dresden both noticed something. The black veins from Dresden's weapon were spreading faster the longer it was held in place. Unfortunately, it was not pinned for long. The unkillable dragon tore its head out from Kayla's grasp, letting half its face be ripped off, revealing its draconic skull beneath. It whipped itself around, hurling both Taryn's summon and crossfire off it as it shot up into the sky. It quickly darted back down onto Kayla's wrecks, snatched its back in its claws, and flew it up into the air. I hear you inside this creature, mortal, and I will tear through this feeble flesh to devour you. It then bit into the back of the Rex's head and tore a piece of flesh free. Taryn sent his summon straight for the unkillable dragon's ankles and dug four sets of claws into it to loosen its grip on the Rex. One leg released, but then the dragon just snapped its jaw towards Taryn's beast. His summon leapt back out of the way, but the beast's teeth still scratched right across one of the creature's arms and tore a new gash into Taryn's own arm. Dresden stared at Taryn in shock of how much pain he was enduring. The unkillable dragon's grip loosened enough to release Kayla's Rex, which crashed down to the earth and through the impact could also be heard a sharp snap. The Rex was trying to get back up, but its legs weren't cooperating. Uh-oh, bad news guys, Kayla called. I think this thing's legs are broken. The unkillable dragon swooped down towards her, but Crossfire leapt into the way and tried to wrestle the dragon to the ground once more. Taryn's arm was trembling. We need something to pin it down. I do have an idea, but 
It might be a long shot and I'll have to go back to my world. Dresden, you're a far more experienced overseer. Is there any way you could maintain my summon for me? Keep the Searing Flame Fox here to distract it while I'm gone? I've certainly seen and used abilities similar to yours, and yes, I believe I could take it over, but if you have a bond with this creature, you would still be the one at risk. Whatever it takes, please just do it! Dresden stared at him for a moment. You are aware that would essentially mean you're placing your life in my- Please, take it! I can't risk this creature hurting anyone else, not in any world I'm meant to oversee! Dresden was surprised, but all the same, gripped Taryn's arm and tapped his own runes. Soon, the rings hovering around Taryn's wrist shifted over onto Dresden, and his eyes began to glow orange. Surprisingly, the Flare Fox's movement suddenly became much faster and more direct, biting into the flesh of the unkillable dragon's wings, then avoiding swipes and strikes and darting back in, faster for more precise blows. Taryn opened a portal. I'll be back as soon as I can. He stumbled through, looking drained and exhausted, but fighting through it. Kayla suddenly stumbled out of the back of the Rex and scrambled over to Dresden and Sir Bright, who had sort of just been sitting back and enjoying the show at this point. Kayla said, I, I saw the portal, where's Tehran, and why do you have his summoning rings? The unkillable dragon swung its tail at crossfire on the ground as the flare fox came in soaring behind it, but it feigned the move at the robot, having seen the attack coming from behind it, and whipped around with its head, snapping its jaw at Tehran's summon. Its teeth sliced another gash in the fox's arm. Kayla looked at Dresden's arm, but no cuts opened in it. Can you not be hurt by the summoning bond like Tehran can? I do not have a bond with this creature. I'm simply maintaining Overseer T905's bond. Any pain the creature incurs will still go directly to him. What? Why would he- I- I swear, Dresden, on my life, if you and let- I swear on mine that he will not die by my own failings. Now let me concentrate. Kayla was astounded by how serious he seemed about the claim. She turned back to the dragons brawling in the air. After that first mistake, Dresden didn't seem to be making another. The flare fox moved like flaming lightning, dodging every blow that came its way for a while, at least. The unkillable dragon started to fly higher and higher up into the sky, with the fox dragon nipping at it, while still avoiding strikes. Then, when it had gotten high enough, the beast folded its wings and flew directly towards the ground, rocketing towards the surface as if it were an asteroid. It was headed straight for Crossfire, who was trying to ready up, but there was little he could do to prepare for an impact like that. Dresden shot the fox straight down after it, but before the unkillable dragon reached the ground, it thrust its wings out to stop in midair, and Dresden didn't react fast enough. The flare fox crashed into the unkillable dragon's back and flopped through the sky. The unkillable dragon's jaw swung around right for the fox's neck, certainly a death blow, but Dresden yelled out, I release this summon. The unkillable dragon snapped its jaw through a puff of flames and fur. But the Flare Fox had vanished, as had Taran's summoning rings from Dresden. Dresden then ran out into the field himself once more. Kayla called after him. What are you doing? I shall distract it myself. Go with Sir Bright and- But before Dresden could finish, a portal opened in the ground right before him and he skidded to a halt. He and the unkillable dragon looked down at the wide open portal to the top of a forested mountain just as a cascade of vines erupted upwards and tangled around the beast, restraining its jaw, binding its wings, and nearly encasing it in a cocoon of greenery and branches. It could do little more than thrash as it was pulled down through the portal to the mountaintop. A familiar violet dragon suddenly flew up through the portal and quickly spotted Kayla. It flew down to her and Violet rubbed its head against her. She happily scratched under the dragon's chin then leapt onto its back, and Sir Bright quickly followed. Violet trotted over to Dresden, and Kayla gestured for him to hop on as well. They glided back down through the portal to land in a small clearing, where the unkillable dragon was still thrashing, but barely visible through the bramble of vines. Next to the dragon was another, much taller, this one seemingly made of tree bark and vines itself, the Titaragon Kayla had so briefly seen earlier that day. Kneeling in front of the thrashing bound dragon was Tehran. I humbly apologize to you, great dragon. I wish we could have found a way for you to live in peace with the humans of our world. I would rather burn for a thousand lifetimes than attempt peace with the sniveling filth of mortals. Taran nodded, then turned to Dresden, who was dismounting from Violet. The dagger's damage is still indeed spreading. If you press the blade farther into the creature's skull, 
That will likely be the end of this. Dresden tilted his head curiously. Would you not desire the honor of slaying this creature yourself? I don't take joy in killing dragons, even ones as hate-filled as this. I only do it if I feel I need to for others' protection. Additionally, you said you'd always wanted to be the one to slay one of these creatures, correct? Perhaps it could be cathartic for you in a way. Dresden was halted by the gesture. Unfortunately, he wasn't fast enough. Take that, you ugly beastie! Sir Bright said as he marched over and slammed his palm onto the dagger, hammering it farther into the beast's head. That's for the one time you ate me! I smelled like dragon guts for a week! The beast writhed once more and the veins pulsed larger and farther until... It simply stopped moving. All was still. Well, I'll still consider that my kill, in a way. Thank you, Mr. Bright. Oh, you're very welcome. Taryn turned to the Titaragon and profusely thanked it. He also asked that it keep the creature bound for a week or so to ensure it truly was dead, though he and Dresden could both see that the energy making up its body was all fading into nothingness. Dresden retrieved his dagger from the creature's lifeless forehead. Turning to Taryn, he said, You are quite the anomaly as far as overseers go, T905. I am impressed. Taryn stood next to Kayla, who was still suspiciously eyeing Dresden. Please, call me by my name, Taryn. I'd rather not. Why? Kayla jumped in. Because if you stopped thinking about overseers as numbers instead of people, you might reconsider trying to kill them all or whatever terrible thing you and that demon lady have got planned. Your irksome group has a bad habit of assuming to know what... Anyhow, T905, our bond is complete, and you are no longer in my debt. And this venture... may have given me some things to consider. Good day. He tapped the runes on his forearm quickly and opened a portal to a musty yellow room. But before stepping through, he turned back. By the way, your ally, Mr. Ingeal, asked about a... as he called it... Multiversal super school for some of your younger allies. Suggest to him that he investigate dimension H333. If they permit him entrance, he may find what he is looking for there. Before Taryn could thank him for the information, Dresden was gone. While Sir Bright was dancing around the not so unkillable dragon's corpse, Kayla asked Taryn, So, what do you think? Could Sterling be right and there's a good guy in there that we might be able to dig out from Dresden? Taryn took a breath before saying, Well, I'm certainly not as convinced as Sterling seems to be that Dresden will one day march into the Sharp Tank, hand us back the pieces of the multiversal orb, and commit to atoning for his misdeeds. But this occurrence has made me more willing to keep an open mind when it comes to him. Kayla leaned in and gave him a quick kiss before saying, You having an open mind? That sounds pretty good. Whose idea was that in the first place again? They both chuckled and Taryn wrapped his arms around Kayla. They both stood there for another moment before Charlie interrupted. This is all well and good and it has some real we're done for the day kind of energy, but shouldn't we go back and help Crossfire? He did lose an arm. Ah, uh, with each passing Multiverse Tales episode, my plans fall ever farther into place. By the way, going forward with Community Redraw episodes, I probably will be sticking to four drawings instead of the five or sometimes six that I have done before. Obviously, I want to get to as many people's submissions as possible, but Community Redraw episodes are already significantly more work than regular episodes even without the extra art, so they have had a bit of a tendency to stress me out sometimes trying to get them done on time. So sorry about that, but I also think it means that the drawings that I do end up picking, I can put that much more time and attention and care into making sure they look really good. Which I would say is reflected in this episode. I really like the art in this. Speaking of which, thank you very much to the people who were selected for this episode. Silas Fane. Logan Sansom, insert name here, and Maester Kunst Planet. And of course, thank you to everybody else who submitted as well. There was a ton of cool SCPs to choose from. Now for the June 2023 community redraw prompt, I want people to submit their own venomized or carnageized or some kind of Marvel symbiote blended version of a Multiverse Tales character, specifically one of the ones on screen. So anyone from the Sharp Gang or Harold the Herald or Niseko Kuznet. 
so you've got 17 different characters to choose from. Again, if you need a summary of any of those characters, you can always go back to the Multiverse Tales Explained episode. Excited to see what you all submit, but besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note, and the thought I want to leave people with today is one that I've probably used before, but I always think it's good to remind people of it, which is that a person who is highly resourceful will always long term beat someone who just has lots of resources, but lacks the cunning to utilize them well. Right now, with the internet at our fingertips, we have way more resources than any other time in history. So if you can use those well, use what you do have to your advantage, you'll probably be amazed by what you can accomplish in this life. I hope that's inspiring. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Friday. Goodbye.